All right, I'm back with part two here and we're going to discuss how to create some anchor fields here. So uh, before I do that, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and remove my bomb from the uh, scene here. It's just going to grab that in the uh, outliner here and delete that. And one more thing I need to do, actually, I need to make a change to my bomb blueprint. Um, we never uh, actually destroyed the actor after exploding. I wanted to keep using it there, but typically we're going to want to destroy the actor. So I'm going to add that node here right after the second uh, transient field. And uh, I'm going to actually go to my uh, first person folder here, open up the blueprints folder and the uh, first person projectile. And just going to make a small change here. Uh, instead of this logic, I'm going to drag off this uh, event hit here. And I'm going to go spawn actor from class. And I'm going to spawn the bomb uh, blueprint. And uh, just split the transform pin here. And for the location, I'm going to plug in the hit location here. Uh, then I want to drag off the return value. And uh, I want to do explode. And uh, we'll just plug this in here. And uh, after that, uh, we want to destroy the uh, projectile, the, uh, the yellow ball that the gun fires. OK. And so uh, now, let's see here. We should be able to just fire the gun and lob some explosions wherever we want. Perfect. OK. So with that done here, uh, we'll move on to the anchor fields. And so the anchor field is going to become important. Let's say you want to, for example, grab the piece of floor here. And I want to fracture the entire floor. Uh, I'm going to say new, create a collection, uh, use the uniform cutting tool. And I'll make this into, say, 2,000 pieces. OK, I'll fracture and uh, go back to select mode, turn off the bone colors. And away we go. Uh, but we have a problem here. I'll press play, and this is the problem. Uh, with the floor turned into a geometry collection, immediately the physics becomes active. And of course, uh, gravity causes that to fall. So what can we do to keep that in place? We need an anchor field. So I'm going to make that here. I'm going to go back to the content folder, make a new actor. I'll right click um, Blueprint and find a field system actor here. And I'll call this anchor underscore BP. All right, and for this one, uh, we're not going to work in the event graph. We need to actually work in the construction script. And I need to grab my field system component here drag from that and add a persistent uh, field. A construction field, my mistake. And all right, so we'll plug that in here, enable the field. And the construction field that we want to create is a dynamic state. We're going to change the dynamic state of uh, whatever's uh, being overlapped by our anchor. Um, and so what we want to do is essentially change the dynamic state of whatever's being overlapped to static. Uh, OK, so what we need to do here is add a box collision so we can define our area. And I'm going to also need to add a uh, box fall off. To create a field. And I'm going to have to add a uniform integer, uh, which I'll show you that in a minute, and another culling field. All right, so for the box itself here, this is going to be what defines the anchor area. And I'm just going to turn this to visible for now. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going to turn off hidden in game so that I can see that in the uh, game, see exactly where we've placed it. And uh, I'm going to go to back to the construction script here. I'm going to pull out the box fall off. And we'll set box fall off. 
and I'm going to uh, define the transform uh, from the box collision here. So I'll drag the box collision in, get transform, uh, world transform. And I'll plug that in there. Uh, so now I've defined a box fall off the shape of our uh, box collision. Uh, what I want to do is use this as a culling field actually. So what I'm going to do first is uh, grab this uniform integer and I'll set uniform uh, integer. And so basically I'm going to create a field of infinite extent uh, with the magnitude of whatever I put in here. And for, uh, to affect the change of a dynamic state, what we actually want to put in here is the number of the dynamic state. And uh, what that corresponds to is, um, see here, I'll just select my fractured mesh over here. And in the details here under object type, I can drop down, uh, we have sleeping, kinematic, static, dynamic, uh, user defined. And these are actually number one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so there's, there's no zero index. Sleeping is number one, uh, kinematic two. Static is number three, and dynamic is number four. So it's dynamic uh, here by default. Um, same with the floor here, dynamic by default. And what we want to do is change it to number three, which was static. So I'm going to plug in number three here in the uniform integer. Uh, now this is going to create a field with infinite extent. So we actually need to cull that so it doesn't affect every single thing in the world. And uh, so we'll set up our culling field. And we'll use this uniform integer as the input. And we're going to cull it by the size of this box fall off. And we're culling everything outside of the box. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now I can uh, plug in this return value here to the field node for dynamic state. And uh, there's just one more thing that I have to do. So let's say I drag my uh, anchor here. Uh, let's say I want to anchor this particular piece of the floor. Okay, so I put my anchor here. And uh, what I need to do is select my floor geometry collection and in the details here under the uh, area here where it says the rest collection the actual geometry collection I have an initialization fields uh, and I can add an array element here and find this anchor in the uh, world scene in the in the outliner uh, you can also pick an actor from the scene using this uh, eyedropper tool and now that I've done that, it's basically going to register that construction script with, uh, with this geometry collection. Uh, so I should be able to press play and our floor should stay in place. And in fact, it is. And uh, so let's check out how this anchor works here. Say I start to break apart pieces of the floor. Uh, okay. Everything's fine as long as the anchor is still holding us up. But as soon as that's broken, you can see what happened there. The whole floor fell. And so that's basically how an anchor works, is uh, it's only anchoring the piece that's overlapped. It's turned this single piece to static. And because of that, it's actually holding up the entire floor. And so um, you can strategically place an anchor in a way that makes your structure break apart in the way that you want. So basically, I've broken apart everything except for the little island here that's actually anchored. And so that's why, of course, we're still standing. Uh, little, much more damage here, and we're going to lose that uh, connection. And it's going to be, oh, that's it. I'm left standing on just the anchored piece. 
All right, so that's uh, pretty much how uh, anchors work and that's gonna come in handy. Uh, another way that you're gonna need to use anchors is when, for example, let's say you turn a wall into a geometry collection. Fracture this wall, new, create, uh, uniform. Let's go with uh, 500 pieces. And uh, I'll turn this, uh, turn the bone colors off. Okay. Now, uh, if I just press play, we'll see what happens. Get a bunch of damage right away and the wall just falls off. And uh, it's actually uh, because the wall, it's touching uh, this other geometry and so it gets an initial little bit of uh, wiggle or a little bit of uh, uh, connection uh, event happening there and causes a little bit of damage off the hop. Uh, so what we can do here is grab, say, another anchor blueprint and uh, I'll just drag that, uh, let's say, here. Uh, and you would put this, you know, somewhere in a, in a corner, where, you know, maybe something like actually, uh, let's see, put this uh, over here. Or you could have this cover the entire bottom section of the wall, just a, a single unit so that it, uh, it can never fully break off. Um, but let's see here, I'll select this wall geometry collection, go to the initialization fields, add one, put in the uh, anchor BP2, and we'll press play. And immediately that effect from the beginning of, of pressing play is gone. And that's because we're anchored over here. All right, that's pretty much covers uh, anchor fields. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.